Okay guys, so in this video I'm gonna walk you through the basics of composition. So let's get into it. So what we're gonna cover is basically what the idea of composition is and why it might sometimes be a good thing to use composition and some thoughts I have on when you should use it and when maybe you shouldn't use it. So basically the composition of objects or composition in object-oriented programming is the idea of using a actual instances of objects that would naturally become nice superclasses of a subclass object. And basically that's just a fancy way of saying that instead of using inheritance to subclass a type, you simply create a concrete instance of that type in your subclass and in, use that as a field variable internally. And then that's basically all there is to it. And there are pros and there are cons to this. But in general terms, favoring composition over inheritance is, well, it's a very nor it's a very common term that a lot of best practices, Java books, and like not just Java books, but a lot of object-oriented values are based around this this term. But I also want to touch on something like because. Uh, as a beginner, it might be you may think that or I favor composition over inheritance means that oh you should always do this, but I will make the argument that it's a little bit of a you you do have to think about it a little bit more than that because if you go to the other extreme, you might actually create weird code instead of code that is nice and efficient. So let's just walk through it. So here in my main.java file I have these two services and my completely little demo project here is just gonna call two like two two methods on a service which is called product service. So let's have a look at our services package first and foremost. So here is a example of just storing instances of a service. So instead of using something like dependency injection or things like that where I instantiate things using external tools, I simply have a class that holds references to my different services. And this is the like this is a very concrete and you in my experience fairly useful situation to use composition. You have a bunch of services and you don't necessarily want to subtype or inherit from these different services. You want them to be their own kind of domain, if you will, but you still need functionality from some services in other services. And an example of this is that the email service is a very common service where you need to send emails and maybe the product service actually needs to be able to express that, hey, I want to be able to send an email of some sort or use that that functionality within other logic. And it's it wouldn't make much sense to inherit from or subclass from email service down to product service because email service is a very cross-cutting thing that is very likely to be used in multiple different services, right? So if we have a look at, uh, well, we can just look at email service. I mean, the, this is just like, uh, be, like it's just stubbed off so we can get the types because we don't actually have to make an implementation to make this point. So as you can see here in a my product service all it has is a reference to the actual email service when it's being created because it depends on the functionality that is being provided through the email service. And basically that's all there is to it. Like this is inherent this is composition instead of inheritance, because if I were to inherit from email service, I might get a bunch of other methods that I don't really need inside of this my product service. All I really want is to have a few select methods and instead then of subtyping or subclassing and getting a bunch of other stuff exposed to to me in the inheritance change and creating an unnecessary coupling between this service and the email service, I'm going with this approach instead. So that's a, a concrete, this is a very concrete example where I think composition makes a lot of sense. And when it comes to inheritance, I want to touch on a little bit where kind of where this idea of composition comes from and one of the main, bigger thoughts around why it actually should be something that is favored. And one of the reasons is because it's very hard sometimes, especially if you have long inheritance change, chains, to figure out, or inheritance trees, to figure out what is going to be a good inheritance chain, or basically what you should include in each type, because these abstractions can become really, really tricky. So I want to show you a few models here that are fairly common. So you may see yourself using something called an entity. So an entity in in well in Java land 
and in most object-oriented programming languages is just a way to represent a something, well usually something within the system, a domain object within the system that you should be able to reference somehow. And one of the most common things an entity has is an ID, because that's the single thing, that that's the common denominator for all entities. A entity is something that you should be able to reference somehow, it's usually something you persist in a database or something. But if we look at this entity here, now the person who made this, who has done one, made one, one little bit, bit of a mistake here. And the mistake that has been made is that we have included a name on top of the entity. Now, why is this a mistake? Well, because the entity is going to be the top level class in, an, in a chain of inheritance. And the problem here is that although it might make sense to have an ID on an entity, the question is, do you actually need the name? Because the name may only be used by a portion of the subtypes. So if we look at the subtypes to this, we'll see that a user has a sub is subtyping the entity. And this makes a lot of sense, right? The, a user will have a name. But then we have another subtype, which is called order. And it's kind of weird that an order is now forced to have a name of some sort. Maybe we want, like, why would an order need a name? It might have a price, it might have a reference number or some other thing going on here, but a name, why would that happen? Would that be needed? So hopefully this kind of touches on where this doesn't really feel right, that some like some chains might like an inheritance chain may actually be including things that don't it doesn't really make sense to have it as part of this corresponding subtype and this is an example where you have had like you've made a mistake within your chain of inheritance and now this is a very trivial example but you can actually get into a situation where this becomes a really really big problem where you have really weird and odd classes basically and domain objects or services that they don't really f feel all that natural and they become pretty much bloated and more or less legacy code very quickly because somewhere up the ladder in the chain of inheritance somebody has started including things that doesn't really fit well with this corresponding subtypes and what's really important is that if you have a really long chain of her inheritance that you don't just arbitrarily mutate different classes within the chain because if you start doing that you might actually find that oh damn you're all of a sudden uh, as adding a lot of complexity further down the chain so that this is one of the reasons where this idea of composition comes into play because if you have composition it's very isolated. You can isolate all of the f functionality of uh, one class or one domain object into its own thing and then include that thing and still gain the benefits but also isolate the functionality that you don't need in a subtype or, which, or a class that actually depends on that concrete instance, right? So. Well, let's talk a little bit about something that may make more sense. So let's talk about an example where you can actually have a, you know, a nice inheritance chain, if you will. So here we have something we call an identifier. So it's not an entity, it's just a identifier in this case. And okay, and an identifier needs to somehow uniquely identify something, right? And all it's going to do is it's going to store a like a universal ID. And now this becomes a, like a very sensible thing to have with you. So if I want to make concrete implementations of different ID types, let's say I wanted to make a product ID, well this is a fairly a very nice inheritance. It's very natural that okay an identifier is something that identifies something and the concrete subtype of that would be a product ID because a product ID is going to identify a product and then maybe we have a user ID. You see that this chain is it's much more natural. It's not including anything that is un unnecessary. But as I said, it's very tricky to predict this, and it's very easy to say that, oh, favor composition over inheritance, but sometimes inheritance is actually the way to go, and in this scenario, I actually think that it is the way to go. So finally, we're going to touch on a, something a little bit different, where it might be a bit of a gray area. So if we have a look at our product here, so we have a, an, an instance here of just like a good usage of, well, composition, if you will, where we have all these types and we're including these, like in, just as, as 
normal, right? We're simply adding in the types that we need and we're creating this product and product class. So this is something that is very like well like segmented. It's something that we can extend on and kind of go further on. Like there's nothing really stopping us from subtyping this. But then we have this relationship here where we have a user where we have created this little user and everything's dandy, right? And now we have a new set of requirements stating, hey, we need a VIP user. Now, if we kind of willy-nilly just accept this idea of, all right, we're gonna favor composition over inheritance. In this scenario, we are using inheritance, or sorry, we are using composition. So basically what we're doing now is that we are creating a VIP user and then basically just grabbing a user, wrapping a user inside of this VIP user, using it as a field variable, and in this case the VIP user is just a user that is any re regular user, and the, you, this user, the only difference between a VIP user and a regular user is that that's, there's another field with like a free product or something like that, right? Now, I will pose the question to you. Is this a good use case for composition? Well, it's a bit of a philosophical discussion, but What's kind of odd here is that, all right, so now in order to instantiate this VIP user, I actually have to create a user and then wrap that in a VIP, in a VIP user. I will argue that maybe in this scenario, it would have made more sense to use inheritance because the only difference between a VIP user and a regular user is this field here. And it's actually, I, otherwise I need everything that the regular user needs, like there's no change in requirements between a VIP user and a user. Everything is 100% the same thing. So this, there's a very strong coupling, if you will, between a user and a VIP user. So maybe this time it would have made sense to use inheritance instead. So basically what I want you to take away from this is that the way to think about composition versus inheritance is to th consider the coupling, in my world at least, the coupling between the super class or the, like the coupling between the different entities. If you have things that are not really good fits, like they, there's not a really strong coupling between them, it's not a good idea to, like in general, to inherit from them. It's rather, you know, in the, these scenarios, it's a much nicer approach to simply include them. Some, like I showed you with the email service and the product service. There's no cop a real strong coupling, so you kind of want to go, you know, with inherit, uh, well, with um, composition in such a scenario. But if there's a really strong coupling, it's a, you should consider using inheritance because I don't think that the way, like there, it's not a silver bullet to always go with composition over inheritance. Have a great day.